Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll start finding seats, we'll start in one minute. Call this session of the City Council to order, and we will begin with the invocation. Uh, Reverend Kevin Went with Grace Lutheran Church, if you'll come forward. We'd honorable Mayor, honorable members of the City Council, it's as a resident of the City of Destin and pastor of Grace Lutheran Church that I'm honored to be here and lead you in this invocation. Would you bow your heads with me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, you are the only one true living creator of heaven and earth God. Your word reveals such, and as such, you are ruler of all. We pray this evening that you would graciously give your regard to those who have been set in positions of authority among us, that you would guide them by your Holy Spirit, and in so doing, may they be found high in your purpose, wise in your counsel, firm in resolutions that please you, unwavering in their duty, and that under them, we all gathered here may be governed quietly and peaceably in the city of Destin. We pray this through him who is both fully God and fully man, who paid for the sins of all mankind with his own blood, who rose from the dead and promises life eternal to those who believe in him, none other than your son, the Savior Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. The Lord be with you. Mr. Marler, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I believe each of you have seen a copy of the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve or discussion? I'll make that motion, Mayor. Second. 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 We have a motion, second. Any discussion? Any changes, modifications? Yes. Apparently not. Technology, help. Wonderful thing, technology. There we go. <laughs> the vote is unanimous. The minutes are adopted. We'll go into the public hearing, public hearing section of our meeting. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak on any of these items? I do not have any cards for it. Sir? Please state your name, address when you reach the mic. I uh, know you've Mayor, been here if I could assist, Mayor, if I may assist you. Uh, on the public hearings, those are each separate and distinct public hearings, so if you would please call on item number two okay. first. Thank you. We'll go to item number two. Uh, is that what you wanted to speak on was two? Okay. Yes, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council. Uh, and I want to greet our new city manager, and I'm sure she's going to enjoy working with you folks, and I hope we'll all be able to work peacefully together as the good reverend spoke a moment ago. Uh, this, the, the, the subject of this boat, uh, this um, 
purchase of this property, as I understand it, is for, uh, uh, I have not heard any discussion about it, so uh, really, but I understand y'all are considering more boat ramps, and I, my concern is twofold. One, one uh, is the use of funds. Well, uh, my, my, my whole thrust of everything I've ever said, spoken to y'all about is that we need parking. I realize the boats, uh, uh, the trailers need parking, and, and we need parking on the harbor. And I, I remind you of the um, uh, I guess you would call it the pledge that you make to uh, try to provide additional parking for the uh, for the harbor area. We've got a very successful festive marketplace uh, underway on the harbor. Uh, it's working just like the council expected it to, just like Everybody thought it was gonna work. And so it's a matter of fund. Where are you gonna spend the funds? I think parking garages uh, are, are something that the city promised the prop property owners. And I hope that y'all will remember that and keep that in mind as you go forward with your deliberations. Uh, uh, I might suggest that I think the city is in Sir, a, sir a, this is the concrete plant. That's Park what Road I'm Dump. talking okay. about. I'm sorry. And you're going to use it for something, uh, I, I suppose, a park or, 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 or more boat ramps, boat storage. I don't know, but I, I haven't had any discussion with anybody about that. But it is $2 million, as I understand it, right? And so right. if you spend money on the on the concrete plant, that's two million you don't have to spend on parking garages. That's all I'm saying. So I, I, I think we have to prioritize uh, how we spend the city's money. Uh, and I would suggest to you that, uh, that it might be possible that the, the CMIT people, CMEX, which is an international company, might be willing to finance this for the city and it wouldn't cost the city any money. Uh, the city is in a very good position on, on uh, some leverage here because there's not too many buyers and uh, there are environmental issues involved and I, I'd like to see y'all buy it, if, but I, I hate, it's a matter who, who needs the parking, the people on the harbor or the people, the, 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 the the, the trailers, the boat trailers, if that's what you're going to do with it. I, I, I don't know what your plans are. Maybe you're just going to turn it into a park. I don't know. But uh, I, I remind you of that. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I apologize to the audience. Uh, uh, we, we, of course, are very familiar with this project, and I assume everyone is familiar with it. But uh, Ms. Lejeune, would you want to give us a quick summary of exactly what this proposal is? Yes, sir. Um, this is a uh, proposal. It's a it's a contract that we are asking the city council to approve for a 20 Beach Drive, uh, which is right next to what is currently Joe's Bayou boat ramp. It is a concrete plant. We've had two appraisals by two separate uh, appraisal groups, and the $2 million um, figure is under both of those appraisals. Um, in the agenda item, we have that this purchase of property would fulfill a long-term strategic goal to improve public use of beach and waterways. One of the objectives under that goal is expand Joe's Bayou boat launch facility. At this time, we are not asking the city council to make a decision on the usage of the property. We are asking for permission to enter contract for the property. We would have a period of discovery 
on that property until November 3rd, at which time if we find anything uh, dealing with environmental issues, then we have the option to not pay the $2 million and uh, cancel out the contract. So at this point, we're just asking for permission to uh, enter into contract for the cement plant. Thank you. I probably should have noticed that Ms. Lejeune, our acting city manager, this is her first chance to describe <laughs> business before the council, and we welcome you. Thank you. Uh, I'll go back to the uh, public hearing portion. Is there anyone else that wanted to speak? Ms. Mayor. How about that? I know where the button is. <laughs> Sandy Trammell, 3823 Indian Trail. And um, welcome, Ms. Lejeune. And I appreciate it. I'm a former council member and been working on this project for, gosh, over four years. How long have I been working on this project? Lindy's been working on it a whole lot longer. This started many, many years ago when um, on our citizen surveys, the biggest problem we had was not enough boat launching area, not enough parking for trailers, and we began looking for ways to solve it. The thing came on the market, gosh, at least four years ago, and then it was um, uh, somebody else took it, and it's been back and forth and back and forth. We had the Trust for Public Lands look at it, but because we had a boat launching ramp, which was considered active, they would not pay for it. That's how we got Leonard Destin Park over on the other side, but that's okay, they got one. <laughs> so we got one out of two. Um, I'm asking tonight and speaking tonight in support of this uh, purchase. Uh, I know that Mr. Casella and myself, for lack of anybody else, have talked to as many old timers as we can find in this town, and there have been no major oil spills or anything else that, and we do use concrete docks and we put cement in the, in the water, so it's not um, anything that we can find uh, hazardous on the property just through um, history, I guess is the word for it. Um, just for your information, uh, we do own a little strip of land on the other side too. <laughs> so this this abuts two pieces of, our, you know, we're the only ones that really would uh, benefit from this because right now it's zoned residential and to put houses next to the boat launch and ramp and to have public area on the other side would be a little weird, but anyway. Um, so I'm speaking in support of it, and I'm going to thank you all in advance for supporting it, because I'm really hoping you're going to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? <laughs> woof, woof to y'all. <laughs> to those who don't know me, I am Destin Dog, a.k.a. Nancy Widenhammer. Myself and friends of the Destin Dog Park are interested in you pursuing the purchase of this property, and we will probably be biting at your heels later on to discuss maybe a little area in it for dogs to go in the water, but that's in the future. But we would just like you to consider purchasing the property. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Jim Bagby, 4709 Sea Star Vista, and welcome, Ms. Lejeune. Uh, I, I'm here to support uh, Sandy. I know how hard she worked on this uh, for a very long time uh, to try to get this property, and we should have gotten it when we could, but we didn't, and now you have the opportunity. And I understand uh, it is a balancing act between parking, okay, and all the other needs of the city, clean water, storm water maintenance, everything else that we need, but beach and bay access has consistently over the last 10 years been one, if not our top priority. And this provides you that bay access. Uh, as far as the environmental, I would ask you to look at if there is an environmental, uh, that you have a clause in the contract that allows you to uh, diminish the amount of the contract uh, to cover up or cover the cost of the cleanup of any environmental impact and to still get the property. 
uh, because there may be something there. There may have been a truck that had an oil leak or something, and I'm sure that's exactly where they'll do the probe, clean that up, deduct it from the overall cost of the property, and buy the property. Uh, for what it's used for, you know, we can have that conversation after the city owns it. But thank you very much. Thank you. The contract does have a clause for environmental uh, phase one and phase two audit before purchase. Um, I don't believe the actual wording says that we will have the ability to reduce the price, but we have the ability to reduce the contract, which means we can negotiate. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members, uh, Matt Trammell. Uh, 735 Planet Drive. I am the chairman of the Destin Harbor Board, and this uh, this subject came up at our last meeting, the end of last month, and we had discussed, um, you know, the thoughts of the board uh, on the purchase of the property as well as what we'd ultimately like to see there, and we didn't get into too much detail. You know, we know there's still a lot of planning to go on uh, prior to the purchase, um, but unanimously, the unanimously, uh, the uh, the board was in full support of purchasing the property, and then they took it a step further and were encouraging the council to consider keeping the natural areas natural that are on the site. Um, there's a lot of potential for living shorelines, some enhancements of the natural freshwater uh, water body there that's, uh, that's there now, and that was a directive given to me to march forward to the council is purchase the property and keep the property as natural as we possibly can. So removing my um, harbor board hat for a second. Uh, I'm here as just a citizen. I too am encouraging you to purchase the property and to also keep your minds open as much as we can. I know there's a parking issue with the neighboring uh, parcel uh, at the boat ramp. We have five stalls over there. There are some enhancements that we could make to that, that boat ramp, um, but let's really keep our minds open when we're looking at the full use of the property. There's so much potential tying in with the thin sliver of land that's moving up further to the north the wetlands that are further over across the street, um, the property that's there at the, uh, uh, at the boat ramp now, I think in some it's somewhere around 20 acres if I'm not mistaken, a huge piece of property. But when we're talking about quality of life, when we're talking about enhancing, uh, enhancing that for our residents as well as future families, that's what people wanna see. Natural areas, more parks. Uh, I'm a consultant with the, um, the Oklahoma County TDD. They're, uh, there's a huge initiative now moving forward to ecotourism. Let's get people off the beaches, out of the, uh, out of the shopping malls. Let's push them into the bays. Let's show them some of the other natural areas of Okaloosa County that are really an untapped resource. Um, you know, it, it could even go as far as the existing dock that's there now. We can put kayak launches there. We can have a public access dock, transient slips. Um, you could do an oyster uh, reef restoration project, you can do a marsh restoration project. All of these things hit on so many uh, different levels, water quality, public access, um, you know, school activities for, for school children, it's, it's incredible. Not only that, there's a ton of grants out there for this specific type of work. Um, it's, the, the opportunities are endless, I've got a whole laundry list, I won't bore you with, with all the details, but one last thing, we're also the county's consultant working on artificial reefs. And I've already spoken with Mr. Campbell about potential use of the concrete that's out there now. There's absolutely no reason why we couldn't take a large portion of that concrete and take it out and sink it as artificial reefs. Um, whether that be the material that's on the ground or the blocks that are out there now, the county, um, I'm sure, would be willing to partner with the city. The city and the county have always played very nice uh, with one another. Um, I'm sure, I haven't gone out and, and seek or sought their, uh, their approval, but I'm sure the Destin Charter fishing fleet would be all behind this, as well as you know, just about anyone else you talk to. More reefs are equal more fish. Um, so, with that, I encourage your support and uh, hope you approve the project. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for your service on the Harbor Board. Any more members from the public like to speak? Not seeing any. We'll move to the City Council. Um, Jim, Council Member Foreman, excuse me. Thank you, Mayor. Must be something wrong with this when everybody supports it. Uh, I too believe that this is a tremendous opportunity. I think it goes back to, at least to my knowledge, to three city managers, uh, Marianne Ustik, 
uh, Greg Gasella, and now our new city manager, uh, interim city manager, and all like that, who have dealt with this. And it has been back and forth, but it is, it's an opportunity in a small city like ours, every once in a while, an opportunity comes up and you have to take advantage of it because you don't, you don't have that option often. So in that light, I'm gonna make the recommended motion. I move that city council approve the purchase and sale uh, agreement for 820 Beach Drive with the closing date of November the 3rd, 2016 in the amount of $2 million using the city's unreserved fund balance and making the appropriate budget amendment. I further move that the staff seek RFPs for the removal of the existing concrete on the property site. I'll second that. I have a motion, I have a second. Council Member Braden. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have had some people with concerns of purchasing this, and I guess the biggest thing was spending $2 million for a piece of property when we have things that need to be done. Um, the one here recently is um, the stormwater in Indian Bayou. I mean, we have homes that are flooding over there, and they'd really love to see us $2 million be spent over there. <clears throat> um, but I feel like this is one of those projects that, yeah, I wish it would have came along um, at a little better time where we, you know, had plenty of money to purchase it, but we have the opportunity to buy it, and I feel like we need to, to take that opportunity and purchase it. Um, I just don't want, I just don't want the people to think that, you know, we're just, just have money to throw, you know, hand over fist at this type of stuff, um, and that they're not going to be forgotten, you know, with other other problems that we do have in the community that that are, are just as important, if not more important, than just purchasing this piece of land. Um, but that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Dixon. Um, I. Um, um, I've got a lot of phone calls, emails on this piece of property, and, and I will say I've only had one person that has said anything negative to me about it, but um, I'm all for it. Um, uh, I think that we should be doing the best we can to, to provide water um, um, access and, 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 our, and our boating amenities and our parks and things like that. I just, one of the things I do worry about is, um, and as we talked about in our visioning session, is that you know, the more of this stuff we get, the more it has to be maintained and, and just want to make sure that we're aware of that and make sure that we know that, that taking on another piece of property is going to take on another, um, you know, layer of, of needing to pay for the maintenance of it. But, but I am for this and, and I think it's a good, good purchase. I see no further discussion. If not, I call for the vote. I don't have it on my screen either. It's locked up, just one minute. He's the only yellow one. That's yeah, to chat him locked it up. <laughs> <laughs> the vote is a unanimous yes to purchase a Mayor, concrete plant for a new Mayor, park. Congratulations. Mayor. Yes. Uh, in the absence of the voting machine, a roll call vote is required by the charter. And absent of the, the roll call did work. Oh, in, okay. In absence of the voting machine. Oh, machine, okay. A roll call vote vote is required of each vote. Mr. Clark, would you call the roll? Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Marler? Yes. Mr. Foreman? Mr. Dixon? Yes. Mr. Ramswell? Mr. Miss yes. Ramswell? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I almost call you Preble. Oh, Miss Ramswell? <laughs> Mr. Braden? Chairman. Yes. Unanimous seven, nothing. Item number three is the second reading of Ordinance 1605P2. 
PC. Uh, Mr. Miller, would you read my title? Yes, Mayor, thank you. <coughs> ordinance 16-05-PC by title is an ordinance of the City of Destin, Florida, <coughs> amending Comprehensive Plan 2020, providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for jurisdiction, providing for the adoption of a small-scale amendment to the Comprehensive Plan future land use map to include a change in future land use designation of a parcel of land from Bay Estates to low density residential, providing for incorporation into the comprehensive plan, providing for conflicting provisions, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. The ordinance is before you for consideration on second reading. Ms. Lejeune, description. Uh, yes, Mayor. The current owner of 802 Cross Street um, has a 100 feet by 300 feet lot at the corner of Cross Street and Seibert Avenue. And the owner wishes to divide the northeast 150 feet of the lot into two 75 feet by 100 feet lots. Now the subject property is adjacent to property that's already designated as low density residential to the northeast and directly across Seibert, Ave Seibert Avenue to the south. It is also adjacent to property designated as Bay Estates to the northwest and directly across Cross Street to the west. The change to the land to low density residential would allow the extension of the existing low density residential development pattern of the single family homes on Cybert Avenue by the two additional lots 150 feet to the west. So we are asking here to amend the future land use map of the 2020 comprehensive plan uh, to designate 150 feet of 802 Cross Street from the Bay Estates to low density residential. Thank you. Public comment? Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michael Mead. I represent Mr. Josh Riker, the uh, applicant before you tonight. Uh, last time we appeared here, we presented a case which I believe was persuasive and the, this council was kind enough to make a recommendation for the uh, approval and uh, we're here on the, the second reading. Uh, our same group and additional folks are here tonight to speak again but instead of replowing that field once again I'll simply ask to have a seat and should there be any questions would ask for the right to possibly <clears throat> reappear and, and present that evidence again. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do so. Any other members from the public? Council? Oop, excuse me. All right. I'm Mick Parker of 820 North Lakeside Drive. I uh, spoke a couple of months ago uh, about this same issue the first time that, uh, that it came up. And ironically enough, it was one year ago today that I walked into this same city building, sat in these uh, offices in here and spoke with uh, the staff of the city development and planning department along with the previous owner, um, Mr. Alan Staples. And uh, he's here tonight and will be speaking also. And uh, we, uh, I was under contract to purchase it and uh, came in and sat down to see what my options were with, uh, with the lot and uh, I proposed putting it into three lots and uh, putting it into four lots, cutting it in half, cutting it in half again, which is exactly here. I, I tried every which way possible to get to where, uh, where this guy's gotten or just get further than cutting it in half. And that's uh, just to, for the record, I want to say what, here's exactly what was told word for word was I was told uh, the only thing that can happen to this piece of property is it can be subdivided in half like the adjoining corner 
of the L shape. Um, if a map could be pulled up, um, I don't know. But uh, the Bay of States is zoned in an L shape, and the opposing corner is cut in half by 150 feet. And two houses are built there. And I was told that is the only thing that can happen. They said that Bay Estates is viewed as historical destined. They didn't want people coming in and subdividing it up and chopping down all the trees. And that uh, that was the reasoning. And then um, after all this has taken place, I was told how I didn't go about it the right way was I didn't fill out a formal application. Uh, the gentleman told me that it is uh, $1,200. And he said, and I quote, I don't want to see you waste your money on your application because this is not going to happen. So with that advice being given from the guy that's sitting across the desk from me telling me that what I'm proposing isn't going to happen whether I fill out an application or not, it, why would I break out my checkbook and fill out a formal application if the guy that's supposed to know the rules and know what's going on and giving me the advice on can I do this or can I not do this, when you tell me it's not going to happen, I take him at his word, it's not going to happen. He said the only thing you can do is bring it before the council and they would have to rezone the entire l shape Bay Estates, the whole thing. They said we cannot rezone one lot. It is spot zoning and it is illegal. And that there is the part that has me up here again tonight. Um, and I got my family here with me too. It's, I was told this is illegal. I was told it's not going to happen, and the fact that his application came along with the signatures of that same staff member as a recommended action for the council to approve it is beyond me. It's got me scratching my head. I don't. I just. I don't understand that. It. Uh, whatever. It, uh, Mr. Foreman, you just said that uh, the city has. A great opportunity here that pieces of property present themselves very rarely and you've got to seize those opportunities. I have a, a piece of property present itself to me through one of my best lifelong friends, a fellow fisherman, a fellow, fellow captain, and um, it's been, it had been in his family and uh, I tried to seize that opportunity and I did everything uh, with my due diligence to come in here and seek the guidance of the city staff to try and go ahead and do uh, what, what's being proposed and uh, looks like being pushed through here um, one year ago to this day. And um, anyway, it's, uh, it's a shame. And uh, the main reason I'm here is uh, we got an interim uh, city manager. And uh, I would just, uh, the main reason I'm here is uh, I'd like for you to hear this and to hear that uh, after speaking with a lot of people in the public, and hearing this, uh, I just want you to know the type of things that uh, the, the staff you're inheriting is capable of. It looks like I got 37 seconds, so let me read this. Uh, this is from Jason Heineman. He is of 804 Cross Street. He's the neighbor, uh, the adjoining piece of property. And uh, he's got his signature on here, and I'll give this to whoever wants it when I'm done. It says, I, Jason Heineman of 804 Cross Street, Destin, Florida, would like my name and signature removed from the petition I signed for the new owner of 802 Cross Street based on the facts that the City of Destin Development Par Department staff told Mr. Parker and Mr. Staples last June that what is being proposed was illegal and could not be done. In no way is it ethical or right to deny one Destin resident an opportunity and grant that same opportunity for another. I have known Mr. Parker for over 20 years and I believe his testimony to be 100% accurate and true. As a long-term Destin resident and fellow fisherman, which Jason is, I would be very disappointed should you choose to allow this to happen now that we know the facts. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have one more? Anything that was stated previously, would you please just confirm that you uh, for it and, uh, and and proceed with uh, new uh, details? Well, my name's Dick Foy. I uh, recently moved in 3819 Indian Trail, and uh, I was actually here talking about hopefully what will be a new park for Destin by Joe's Bayou, but then I heard that uh, Reno Acres is actually part of Bay Estates. Please address your comments to the mayor's council. Thank you, sir. Here's my question, sir. What is the requirements to divide Bay Estate lots? 
I've, I know it's been divided once before. I've seen it a couple of times in my community. What are the requirements? Mr. Shirley. Well, you, I, I would suggest that you uh, talk to staff about that, but they would have to meet the minimum lot size requirements before that would happen. There are access requirements that would have to be satisfied, uh, legal access requirements. Uh, so, all, so the legal you know, some minimum lot discussed. size is? I'm not sure what it is. It's 100 by 150 feet. 150, 100 feet in width by 150 feet in depth. 15,000 square feet, is that right? Will these new lots be 15,000 square feet? As, as presented, the remaining lot that would remain in Bay Estate zoning would be 100 feet wide by 150 feet deep. So it would the, be. Uh, the rezoned parcels, basically the LDR parcels, don't have to be uh, 100 by 150. They can be so uh, what 75 remains, by 100. What will remain in Bay Estates will satisfy the minimum size setbacks depths, square footage, yes. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening. Alan Staples, I'm the previous owner of the property that we're talking about. The property was given to me by my folks as a wedding present. Like Mr. Parker said, uh, I decided to buy a house instead of build a house, sought to sell the property, went to the city office, sat in there with Mr. Parker, and everything that he has said, we were told that the only way it could be divided was I had to cut it in half and deed half the property to my wife or a immediate family member, and it could only be divided that way. Could No splitting it into threes unless rezoned. And the rezoning, of course, would have been considered spot zoning for one lot, couldn't be done. My biggest issue with this whole thing is the fact that I walked in there and looked the man in the face seeking the exact same thing that these gentlemen are seeking and was told that you couldn't do it. It is illegal, it's spot zoning, it will not get rezoned. Uh, Mr. Braden brought this question to the council and the council said that they were not in favor of it and then a few months later I see a sign on the piece of property that I based my selling price on the fact that it couldn't be divided and sold it and now it's a recommended action by the same guy that told me it can't be done it uh you know I've lived here my entire life my parents are born and raised here my grandparents were born here 80 years ago still live on Benning Drive when I walk into the city office and ask them a question and get an answer, I expect that the next person that walks in gets the exact same answer that I got. And it doesn't seem like that's what's happening. And that's my problem. Thank you. Thank you. Does staff wish to comment? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't here when uh, a year ago. I wasn't in this role when, that, when all this transpired. However, I had, did go back and look at the file and what was proposed by the original applicant does have some differences in what's before you now in that they were proposing to rezone the entire lot to, to LDR rather than leave half of it in Bay Estates and half of it in, in LDR. So there were some subtle differences between the two um, submittals and that's, uh, that's all I've been able to glean from my looking through the file. Thank you. Jim Bagby again. I, I do have a question, Mr. Mayor. How is this not spot zoning? Can you or Scott or somebody up here explain to me how changing the zoning for one lot, no matter how many times you subdivide it, is not spot zoning and not a violation of Bert Harris? Which one do you want first? The Bert no, Harris the or first spot one, the first one, the first one. Well, yeah. it's, it's not, well, okay. It's not spot zoning because the, the land uses are consistent with the adjacent residential land uses. So the only, in, in, in spot zoning cases, the few cases that there are out there, it's where you have an intrusion of one land use as an enclave into another district of an entirely different use. And the classic example is 
is creating, for instance, an industrial con uh, enclave into a residential area or something like that. But where you have two adjacent residential districts like this, um, you're not going to get into a spot zoning issue. That, okay. I mean, I, I trust you, but me that, that, that's not my memory is you, you, if you're changing the zoning on a single lot, by definition, that would be spot zoning to me. But that's... Uh, and then my other question is, how, how can the council that has repeatedly uh, opposed the overdevelopment of all areas of Destin, okay, not just Bay Estates, uh, say, because my concern is, is, is this is the camel's nose because you're going to do this here and then you're going to do it on another Bay Estates a lot and the next thing you know it's going to be out in Crystal Beach and well, seven stories really isn't seven stories. Seven stories is ten stories. And then, you know, we, we shouldn't be allowing the overdevelopment of this community and the traffic, all right? Because the traffic in that residential neighborhood, you know, it just increased from one house to four houses. So I would ask you to, to think seriously about what you're doing and the precedent you're setting uh, with this example. Thank you. Thank you. Further comment? Would you like to yeah. respond? I believe the microphone's still on. Michael Mead, 24 Walter Martin, Fort Walton Beach. <clears throat> First of all, and the application has come before you with the approval of uh, a recommendation of the staff approval. Uh, I believe it brings with it legal approval from staff's attorney. Uh, this board has previously uh, made a recommendation, and I think there's also been a local planning agency uh, re approval. Uh, it also comes back to you with no changes in the original request that was made. And as I listened to the persons who have come up and spoken to you, I sat there and kept waiting for them to object to the actual application and the legal analysis made by your staff. And I have yet to hear any statement from the persons who came to testify during this hearing that they said that they misread the statutes or they misinterpreted uh, what has been proposed and what you've recommended. Instead, all of the complaints would be complaints, and they may be legitimate. I wasn't there. I wasn't sitting at those tables when those statements were made, so I'm not about to tell you what was said. You wouldn't even begin to give that any uh, credence if I did. But I think what I'm hearing them say is they are have an objection or a complaint about something that was said to them by another person about the use of the property. Not that the recommendation that's coming to you now is an improper one, but they were misled, if you may, from something that happened in the past. So if there was a transgression which was perpetrated on these fine folks that came before you. I'm very sorry that that happened. A, 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 a burden that has now shifted uh, to this gentleman, Mr. Riker, and his family, who have brought a legitimate request and followed all of your guidelines, paid all the fees, hired all the professionals to make the proper presentation. And then, after having done so, it comes with full approval for you to then not continue with the rule of law, an order, the orderly program which you have created. And once it's going along to say, no, we're not going to follow that orderly program, even though we have sympathy for someone who may have been misguided or misled by someone in the past, maybe not their staff. I would not think that you would want to burden this gentlemen with the mistakes or sins of the past that your authority and, and, and you, the, the correct thing for you to do tonight is to continue on with the path of which you're going. I heard a little comment concerning the, the concrete plant. Well, that sounds like a great thing, but I have a feeling, and, and that's way beyond my knowledge and these other people would know better, that it's probably not zoned right now for a park. And you probably intend to use it for a park. Uh, you probably don't intend to build a house there. 
and it's probably currently in a residential classification. I don't know if that's a zoning or what, but you get the drift of my point, the point I'm trying to make. And when you are called upon to take that ugly concrete plan and, and turn it into some sort of park facility for the public in general, you're going to be asked by that fine gentleman, well, is this spot zoning? Have we just spent $2 million to build somebody a house? And you're going to say no. It's, it's a use consistent with what's in that neighborhood and what you're trying to do. And that's where you're using this thing, like I said before, that's sitting on your shoulders, your brains. Is it in the best interest of the community? Are we following the rules and the laws to the best of our ability? Even if somebody got misled inadvertently at a prior uh, casual, not casual, but it wasn't a vote before you. You've never been called upon to vote on an application. You had an opportunity to have a staff report. I think the gentleman's name was Mr. Parker. There was not a formal application before you so that you could have the benefit of, of examination and, and, co and conversation so you knew exactly what you're dealing with. And so these people who said those things to him could then be questioned here in your presence and so you had the benefit of having them sit here and respond to what Mr. Parker said so you could get to the what really happened to make sure that that particular citizen wasn't misled. Well, let's not penalize Mr. Riker for, not, for that process not having been followed. Even if there was some wrong that occurred, there's no reason for Mr. Riker to, to bear that responsibility. So we would respectfully request that the... Uh, the, the second reading be approved as the prior one was. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Mead. Any further comment? Captain Mike Parker, 827 Kellair Court, 20-something year resident of Destin. And I just want to say this kind of coming from a father. If it was Charles Morgan, if it was Dewey Destin, and uh, as young men about my son's age walked into the city who I've always told him they had confidence in what they do, and he's given advice. And I mean just flat out they told him, you cannot do this. They said it is against the law. That's what he was told. It was against the law. Don't waste your money. Don't spend the $1,200 flat out. Don't do it. And that's what he honored, is what he was told by the city. That's who he came to for the advice, and that's the advice he got. And to watch this take place, because he had plans, along with his close friend, Alan Staples, who was going to sell it to him, just dissipate, go away, okay. But then it resurrects itself, and another group comes in, and they say, okay, we're going to do it for you. It's going to happen for you. And they say, well, we filled out an application. Okay, you filled out the application. My son was told, do not. Do not waste your money. And so I just stand up here and watch this and say, this is something that shouldn't take place. You, my son was denied something that they're giving to somebody else that it should not happen. It absolutely should not take place. And I'll promise you that Dewey would be standing here and Charles would be standing here saying the same thing I'm saying. You told my son... That couldn't happen, and now you're giving it to another man so it can happen. I have nothing against him personally, but for that, the city needs to back itself up. It needs to stand behind what it says when it tells people and not turn around with a double standard and give it to somebody else. It just shouldn't happen, and that's how I feel as a, as a father and as a citizen of Destin. Don't operate with a double standard. If you tell somebody something, it's your word. The city needs to stand behind what its staff says and honor it. Thank you. Thank you. Would you mind turning the mic off? Yeah, no mic. Anyone else? Never mind, we got one. You've already spoken once. But, but he, he reserved his time for after years. Mayor, I request that you allow him. Okay, make speak. it very quick. Thank you. Fill in the love. Mick Parker, 820 North Lakeside Drive. Um, 
This is just, this just hurts watching this unfold, just so y'all know. Um, it just, there's, I don't even know how to wrap this up, but the information I was given by the city staff, whether it was a lie, whether it was just misguided, whether it was misinformed, incompetent, I don't know. I don't know that. All I know is what I was told affected a big opportunity to make a large chunk of money for me and my family. And uh, I tried to do it and go about it the right way. I stand here representing myself. I don't, it, that's just how I roll. And it just, it, it's sad when you go in and you get told one thing and the other guy gets told another. And uh, the guy over there, when he said, when he looked at it, he said it was proposed differently. I specifically asked, truth be told, went in and I said, can I cut it into four 75 foot lots? Just how they're stacked all down the LDR right there. And I said, how about three 100 foot lots? Kept getting told, you can cut it in half. And that's it. I said, well, can I cut it in half and then cut this half in half and do exactly what's here? I mean, it's, I was trying to make it work, okay? I did what I knew to do to make this thing work, and it didn't happen. Told, don't fill out an application, don't waste your money. We let Rodney come up here, talk about it. It was viewed unfavorably. I think Ms. Trammell, who's here tonight, was the one that spoke up about it, and uh, it just, man, this is just sickening. Should this thing get, you know, passed through, and um, it is a long-term, over 20-year Destin City resident that, the, you never know how much trust you have in your leaders and the people that represent the city until that trust is gone. And uh, it is a, it's a bad feeling. It really is. And I stand here today just, uh, you can hear the trembling in my voice. It hurts. It hurts watching this. I'm a person of integrity, of transparency, honor, dignity. You can talk to anybody that's known me and knows my reputation. I operate by the book. And uh, it just... Uh, I just pray y'all really think about this before y'all pass this through. And this is nothing personal against you. Nothing. I've never met the gentleman. I have nothing against him. I'm sorry this situation presented itself for he and I. We didn't ask to get put in this position. Bad information, bad whatever you want to call it, it, it put us here. I know you want Thank me gone. I can see it on your face. Yeah. Thank you. Design right. Okay, Shaw Aurora, 4564 Woodman Drive. And I don't even know either of these parties, but I know we do have a new interim city manager here. And I, I stand behind him because for 10 years, I've got multiple different stories on the same piece of property. It's not even one I own. But I've talked to different people, and, and, and several of the council people here know because I've, had, I've talked to them. And I brought a file of them. And I'm like, does this make any sense to you? And I'm, I'm really just saying this for the interim city manager because I am so upset. I don't even know him. But to, for you to ask one person one thing at City Hall and they tell you one thing and two years later somebody tells you that's not so and then three years later somebody else says yes it is and then no it's not depending who's working, who's hired on the staff at that time. I just think it, everybody it, should know. Excuse me, let's, let's keep it on this specific issue well, I don't, for now. Okay, it, I'm just, you can talk on that later, how but do I, let's how talk do about I, this that issue. That is on the specific issue. The specific issue that he's bringing up, I don't know anything about the lot, is that you get different stories from different staff members to the point where you just feel like you must be going crazy. Because I put it all in writing, and I have talked to many council people about it, and I'm just, I'm just standing behind him. So he doesn't feel like he's an ass anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, City Council, I'm Gary Troop. Uh, I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm here for something else. But when I listen to this and I hear that guy talk to the same person as that guy did and got two different things, I mean, it's really troubling to me. And if I was in your position, I wouldn't approve this until I knew exactly why. Or maybe he was told he couldn't do it either and he fought through the legal stuff. I don't know. But if I didn't know exactly what transpired here, I'd have a hard time voting to approve it because it sounds really bad. But again, I don't have a dog in the fight. 
Thank you. Mr. Buckingham over here has six cross street and tried to divide his lot and was told the exact same thing I was. It could only be deeded half to an immediate family member and could not be divided any other way. So he's in Bay Estates, he's right down the road. Exact same thing happened to him. And uh, so anyway. Anyone else? So uh, close public discussion and go to city council. Go ahead. I'm Josh Riker. I'm 97 Peacock Point Drive. Uh, I'm the property owner, local builder. Um, you know, I, I hear Mr. Parker talking. Uh, you know, essentially, I'm in the same position he is. Um, I haven't fought a legal battle, and he told no to try to get around to this point. I met with with the city staff and and, and purchased the property. I brought the applicant. I hired the people. Um, had no idea who Mr. Parker was until he came up at the first meeting and, and, and he started laying out, I guess it was a complaint. Um, there is a, a large difference, at least in my research, only being able to watch what was on the city council meeting that Mr. Braden talked about and what I'm trying to do and what he was trying to do. Um, I have a formal application. He was asking for the city to take, or the, uh, the legislative sponsor, to take the initiative to change it. Um, you know, I'm certainly not trying to get around anything. I feel like I've followed the rules to get where we're at today. And I hope that you can look at what we've done in the past, what we've talked back about in our past meetings, and look at our application on its own merits and not what anybody else may or may not have tried to do in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Sandy Trammell. Third 3823 Indian Trail, and I do live in Bay Estates. And my question is this, where does it stop? One side of this property is next to a Bay Estate zoned piece of property. If you rezone this one, the next one can ask for it and you can't deny it. If you rezone this one, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. So where does it stop? I live clear on the other side of town, so this shouldn't even bother me, but it does because what we're doing is we're going to essentially triple the amount of houses that are on the water down along Calhoun and around all the way around the Indian Trail. And the, the committee that approved this looks at our current standards, our current codes, and says, is this allowable? That's why they approve it. It's not that they're for the project. They're not allowed to be for or against a project. It's that it meets it. So we're looking at redoing a land development code, and we're looking at redoing a comp plan to prevent some of this. And if we allow it now, how are we going to prevent it on Thursday? Into my conversation. Sorry, any further comment? My name is Mike Buckingham, 783 Bayou Drive. I tell my son to do the right thing. I've sat here and listened. Back six years ago, I bought a piece of property, number six Cross Street. I went down to get my property split too. Staff, I'm not gonna say ran me through the ringer, but they took their time and it took me a year. And the only way that I could do it was to split the lots at 100 by 150 and I had to deed them to my families for two years. They told me the same thing they told that gentleman and I had to do it. And I just think if, if, if I have to do something, if you have to do something, we all should do the same rule. And I don't think that this staff should be able to pick who they want to get what they want done. I know it's a lot for me to say out there because I'm getting hung out here a lot, but it's the truth. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Mark Siner. I'm the owner of Choctaw Engineering. I'm the actual agent for the applicant on this. I'm 
I was actually in the meeting with Josh when we met with um, the city staff. Um, and they actually presented to us the information that was gathered in that city council meeting that you had last year that Mr. I guess Mr. Parker was at, and he then they actually told us about Ms. Trammell and her her comments and at the time. And the reason we specifically did what we did was to split this lot into two halves, keep the Bay Estates on Cross Street, do the LDR on the uh, Cybert piece. And I think I spoke to you last time about this, and the reason for that was so it wouldn't be spot zoning, it would be contiguous with it. And the basic, easiest way I can explain this is, is to make all the colors line up with each other on the zoning map. So we touch the same color with the LDR as, they, as the LDR adjacent to us. Um, this doesn't set a precedence as we spoke in our last meeting. You have the option of every single rezoning of future land use that comes in here to weigh each one on their own merits. Uh, we went through the application process. There's a quite extensive process you go through. You answer a lot of questions. It talks about you know, uh, how it impacts, whether it's gonna be a major impact or a minor impact. Um, we're not tripling the number of lots that are gonna be in the city of Destin or anything like this. It's only gonna basically add one more lot to the city than what we already have. The Bay Estates does allow for it to be split in half, just like Mr. Buckingham just said. Um, we understand that, um, but the difference between his property and this property is the fact that he didn't, he wasn't adjacent to LDR, so he couldn't rezone it anyway to get that additional lot. So I think from the standpoint of a technical matter, from 20 years of doing this, and I've been coming before this city council long before most of you have ever been here on this city council and presenting rezonings and future land uses and development orders, and I've done a lot of work here, this meets all the technical requirements of a rezoning and a future land use application. And from our technical expertise, we think that you should approve this just like you did at the last meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, anyone else? Council, I'll close the public session. It's now open to the council members. Thank you, Mayor. So here's where I'm at, and I've kind of been at this spot since the first time you guys brought forth your application. Um, Mr. Parker, I believe you. Mr. Parker, I believe you. Mr. Staples, I believe you. Mr. Riker, I believe you. One of the main reasons I ran and for this office was to make sure that the stories everybody gets out of Destin City Hall <coughs> are the same for everyone. We've had a cleaning of a house of sorts, and it's my unending prerogative to make sure that for the next four years that I'm here, this kind of stuff does not ever happen, okay? We've got a new, ma we've got a new interim manager. We're, uh, Mr. Galander is gone. So here's where I'm at on this. I don't think that it is appropriate for Mr. Riker to pay for the sins of whatever has happened or transpired in the past. And it is not in my ability to make him pay. I don't think it's fair for him to pay for that just simply by following the rules and that if one of our staff members did in fact tell Mr. Staples and Mr. Parker that in fact you can't do anything with your property, your recourse is not with Mr. Riker. But I promise you this, moving forward these things will not be repeated okay so with that i think i'm at the position of uh i'm going to move to uh to amend the comprehensive plan 2020 amending the future land use map designating the east 150 of 802 cross street from bay estates to low density residential and one last point to sandy and jim i hear you i hear you where does it stop personally i don't like subdividing the lots I know that's a way to make money, but at the end of the day, I know it's just one or two lots, but when you aggregate it, it's gonna be, we're gonna triple, and it, it's not, where does it stop, where does it stop? I don't think from necessarily a precedent standpoint that we're gonna be bound to have to continually approve these things, but I think we got a problem in our flume map, something that we're gonna be bringing it up on Thursday, because at a certain point, our infrastructure is crumbling around us and we're gridlocked and we're paralyzed, and this is not going to help. So. Uh, I think I made a motion. If there's a second out there, I'll, you know, and I'll, I'll yield the floor. Mayor, may I interject, yeah. please? Uh, if you look on page five of the staff report, there's a recommended motion which provides for adoption of the ordinance. I'd suggest that to you. Bottom of the first page.
Is it helpful if I read it into the record since I have it before me? Please, just read it in the record. I move that the Destin City Council adopt the proposed small scale future land use map amendment provided for in Ordinance 16-05-PC on second reading. Council Member Destin, do you accept that? Yes, do I? so moved. Move. Do I have a second? I have a, I have a motion and a second. Second can go first. Okay. The uh, mayor, are we not showing up on that? Yes, there? you are. But okay, but, thank but you. A motion or a second just sure. to speak Thanks. first. Then, okay. then you. Okay. <laughs> Seems like a month or two ago, Captain Parker came to my house to, for a different reason. It was about the blessings at that point in time. In in the course of the conversation, he brought up this specific issue with his son. I knew nothing about it at that point in time, and so I assured him that I would check into it and I would try to find out what the background was, so I did. I went to see the city manager, Mr. Casella, and I passed on to him the information that was provided to me at that time. Apparently, he was aware of it already at that point in time. He said he had, he had already been in touch with the, uh, the individuals and the staff. One of the problems that surfaced was that had there been a formal application, it would have gone through the process and it would have wrung out the, the legalities of taking certain actions on that property. But since it was based on advice, there was no record of it. There was no record to go back and research and determine what was said except for what you passed on. So I can see that one of the problems we've got here, and I share that with uh, Mr. Destin, is the fact that <clears throat> it's not the staff's position to give advice on how to develop property. Now they can be asked questions, I'm, that's part of their responsibility, but it's an informal process at that point in time. And I can see how this clearly fell through the cracks and probably an injustice was done. But I stand with the uh, applicant in this. I think he's done everything he was supposed to, and I think uh, he deserves an answer. And, and so for that reason, I second the motion. Mr. Braden. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think that, you know, if this didn't pass, it's not like Mr. Riker can't build anything on this property. He can build two homes on it, apparently. Um, I mean, it just, just, just looks like some of the, the good old boy stuff going down, you know, in this town. It, what we're desperately trying to get rid of. <clears throat> um, I don't know. What is this telling the public? Don't, tr don't trust the staff. Don't trust anything to tell you. Get everything in writing. Um, and this apparently cost this gentleman nearly $130,000. So why can't we hear from the staff member that told him he couldn't, couldn't do it, get his explanation why he's telling him he's it was against the law. We've heard from other staff members why it can be done, but why can't we hear from the staff member that told him it's against the law and it can't be done? Um, my other question is, is why can't the lot next door be rezoned? It's butting up to LDR. When this one passes, it's gonna be right next door to LDR the same way. Why can't it be cut up into three lots just like this lot? And then the lot right next door, it cut up in three lots. Why can't that happen? Would you like me to answer that question? Yes, sir, please. Okay. It can't happen because the only access to the rear lots on the internal Bay Estates, the currently Bay Estates own lots, would require a private road. Private road requirements would, uh, would be such that you wouldn't have the appropriate depths on, those, uh, on, those, on the LDR lots uh, without putting at least three or four of them together and creating a separate subdivision. You, can't, you couldn't do this on an internal lot and meet the other requirements of the code. How many lots can you deed to family members? Can you take an internal lot right next to it and cut it in two or can you cut it in thirds? There is a provision in the code where you can deed a property, a, 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 you can subdivide a lot and deed a, a, portion, a portion of that, sub, that subdivided lot uh, to a family member. Um, it, it can't be developed after that or, or, um, or sold for a period of a couple of years. 
Yeah, and that, and that uh, family member lot also needs to have legal access. So if you've got problems with creating an, an access way that makes the lots too small, then, then that's going to um, prohibit the family member subdivision. So um, even though that makes it a little easier to subdivide a lot into two, it still needs to meet the other requirements of the code, minimum lot size, legal access, and those kind of things. Council Member Marler. That's all I got, Mayor. Thank you. It's amazing what changes in a couple of weeks from one session to another. Uh, my simple question is, okay, if this did not move forward tonight, what would the landowner, what would be the legal recourse for the landowner if he's not happy with what we, what we do? Well, I'd, I'd rather not advise the landowner on what the landowner, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> Okay, what well, landowner let, let me, let me try it a different way. If, if, if the tide doesn't go the way the landowner is, he has legal recourse that it could go through the courts and we could be back here again in I, one way or the other. I, I had, at the last meeting, I had advised the city council that there really, the, the legal recourse for denying this comprehensive plan amendment is probably really doesn't as a practical matter exist. So um, it, it, would, it would be different. Uh, my, my advice at the last meeting was that there really isn't much legal recourse at all. This is an entirely legislative discretion exercise on the part of the city council. And, uh, and uh, you know, that's not to say you won't get sued, but I think it's a, an entirely defensible denial if, if in fact that, that is what happens. Okay, my, my other question, I mean, my, my, the biggest problem I have is the fact that because you got LDR next door, and the way that, yeah, it's a corner lot, it's just the way it sits up. I understand where the applicant's coming from because everything across the street from it on the uh, uh, cybered part is, you know, LDR and the cross street is not. So I understand the thing, but now it just seems like we have more questions than we have answers from the last meeting. And like I said, amazing how this changes and the differences in the last two meetings. That's, that's the only thing I had, Mayor. Council Member Dixon. I don't want Miss Ramsell getting mad over here. <laughs> um, I, um, man, I tell you what, this is this is so um, um, different. Um, the the fact is is that I did vote to support this last time, um, but in looking at everything that we have coming before us, and looking at everything that we need to do with our comp plan and everything else that we're doing, um, I think what we're doing is we're setting ourselves up to be um, basically every meeting there's something like this coming before us and so I I cannot support this tonight um, I, I, I did vote for it last time but it's just I think what we're doing is we're setting ourselves up for um, down the road where we're going to have um, people wanting to divide out everything and and what this does is it this is least adds two other cars to, to the traffic problem but you know it could be basically adding four other cars to the traffic problem so I, I am going to not support this tonight, and 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 the more I know about this, it's not anything about the the actual who could file a lawsuit or whatever. Anybody can sue us for anything at any time. But I will say that 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 in looking at everything that we have going for the city right now, um, we we have a tremendous traffic traffic issue, and we're only compounding it by doing things like this. So I will not be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Councilwoman Ramswell, I apologize. Uh, you're still not lit up. I'm not sure what the problem is. I pushed is, it back when people were talking, but <laughs> it's all good. Um, I have spoken against this back all the way back into November when it came to us and we were discussing it with Mr. Wood and we were listening to staff as they laid out their rationale and their reasoning um, for not wanting to move forward with it. Um, it was brought back to us, I believe it was in April, and um, I, I brought up the same concerns then. You know, if, if we're going to say no to one person, how can we turn around and say yes to another? And again, it's, it's nothing against 
or for either person. It, it's a matter to me of, of principle and trying to do the right thing. And it, 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 all the evidence that's been brought forth, you know, uh, for, uh, uh, originally for me it was spot zoning. And it's actually developed legs, and I believe there's more involved. Uh, earlier tonight, we, we heard about quality of life. We heard about preserving heritage. Those are things that are important to all of us here, and that neighborhood is one that we've heard you know, former Councilman Tra uh, Trammell discuss it. We've heard neighbors discuss it. it. It's one of those areas that we're really trying to preserve heritage. And, you know, uh, the other thing is when you look at the density and the change in the density, as I laid out last time, we would be approving a density that is more than double. In fact, the difference between the current density and what the new density would be is more than what the current density is. So we're talking a significant change in size and allowable density. So, you know, and, and that's just, you know, the start of everything. But I, I opposed it last time. I made a motion to deny. I continue to feel the same way. And again, it, it's nothing against these owners or the prior, but we've got to stick to not only being um, um, consistent, but we've got to stick with what is important to the community, and that's preserving our heritage. Thank you. Council Member Morgan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think I'm echoing Mr. Brady. I, I am really frustrated um, about the inconsistencies uh, with uh, what, what staff had told both uh, parties here. Um, and and I, I would like to hear uh, we've heard from everybody except the staff member in question. Um, and again, uh, I understand my biggest hesitation here was protecting the integrity of Bay Estates um, on page, on the last agenda packet on page 33, uh, the staff findings regarding the economic effects um, where staff has observed there is currently a very strong market demand for vacant single family lots, realtors, developers, et cetera, et cetera, are regular making inquiries uh, regarding the ability to split existing residential lots or otherwise subdivide parcels. This particular action may set a precedent and be followed by similar applications for loom amendments. And this will result in incremental encroachment upon uh, higher density projects into lower density neighborhoods. I have a vested interest in Bay Estates. Um, however, I, I've been told by, I believe both of our attorneys that this will not indeed set a precedent and this is actually an outlier uh, parcel, Mr. Shirley. And who put together this report? This was put together, uh, I believe, by uh, uh, Hank Woolard. And is Mr. Woolard, if I could get his opinion as to whether he still agrees that this indeed sets a precedent, that, that I will be bound to, you know, make future decisions. No, I, I, I don't mean a setting a precedent in terms of what your decisions would be, but. Um, in terms of the number of applications, uh, you know, someone could could view this this action as a willingness or uh, inclination of this particular uh, seated council to to be rule favorably on these things. But that doesn't mean you'd have to. It just I, th I think it would be more a precedent in terms of expectation. Are you of the opinion that this is an outlier parcel? Yes, this is a corner lot. Sure. The only reason this is possible is because it has road frontage on two sides. The interior par parcel, this, this wouldn't be an option. And I, th I think there may be maybe two or three other lots like this in Bay Estates. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Okay. Um, two different council members have made reference to the uh, previous staff member 
who had given advice to Mr. Parker, and I just wanted to state for the record that staff member is no longer employed with the city of Destin and had left prior to the retirement of uh, city manager Greg Casella. Thank you. Mr. Dixon, did you want to speak again? Okay. Um, Mr. Foreman? I think my question's been answered by Mr. Willard there. I was, what I was going to comment on at, at, at our, <coughs> excuse me, our last session, someone asked the question of how many other properties in Bay Estates this would affect, and it was just what you said, that it might be as many as three in Bay Estates. So it's, it's not like it's going to be a uh, proliferation of, of rezonings. Mr. Marler. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think this is where we need to let our new city manager get, get her feet wet. Um, I'm trying to reword this right, but I'd like to uh, put in a substitute motion that we postpone this matter until we get some more facts, especially about the allegations of, uh, about staff members. Although the, no, the staff member is not here anymore, I need to, I need to, we need more documentation on what was told to the first previous owner and what was told to the current owner. So my motion is to postpone this matter until at least uh, the next, at least the next meeting or the, the meeting after that, maybe uh, our new city manager can get to the bottom, get some more information for us. That's my motion. Give a second. I don't know. How do I go with the two motions? First one first? Got to get a second, yeah. No, didn't get a second. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Destin? So, you know, you don't often get to sit exactly like a judge, but this is kind of a, a, a situation where you do. And there's a lot of different ways that judges approach these sort of situations. And from my standpoint, I like to try to apply the rules as they exist at the time that we're trying to make the decision. You try to make sure that the rules are as fairly and equitably applied as possible to the applicants. And as it stands right now, I don't see that Mr. Riker has necessarily done anything wrong. And if, in fact, our staff is giving, gave different information to Mr. Staples and to, uh, to Mr. Parker, which I barely, <laughs> you're not, you're not, it's not a stretch for me to believe that that may have happened. It really isn't. But again, from this point, the rules don't necessarily, he meets all the technical requirements and he, he's not the, and Mr. Riker's not the bad actor in this situation. And to simply say no to him and then I think we're weaving in the problem where we don't like the fact that lots are being subdivided. I'm with you. I don't like it either. And Mr. Riker will probably be the last one I ever would vote for. But uh, the rules are today that he could probably do it. He's applied. He's followed the rules. And I'm saying let's get that over to the workshop on Thursday. And if it is truly the will of the council to make sure that we don't have any more Mr. Riker's applications coming forward or similar applications to subdivide lots, as long as your comp plan sets up the rules and lets everybody know, if you're going to try to come and subdivide Bay Estates, you're not going to be able to because the future land use designation doesn't say that you can go to LDR. You're not going to get this in this situation ever again. Everybody's going to know what the rules of the road are. So I'm still holding on to, uh, to my position. I'm, I'm going to support uh, allowing it to be subdivided, and uh, we'll address the problems with, with future subdivisions of other lots with our comp plan on Thursday. Could I ask if there is a second to Mr. Marler's uh, motion so we continue for discussion? Okay. Council Member Ramsell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Shirley, I have a question for you. You said that you didn't think that this would set a precedent, precedent. and I'm wondering how you can say that, and let me, 
let me back up. At the last meeting, we had discussed that, and I believe it was mentioned again tonight, that in order to do that, you had to have a 15,000 square foot lot, which would be the 100 by 150. And then we discussed that you needed to have a certain amount to enable an access road, correct? So then we said, well, what is to prevent anyone from doubling up on lots and creating their own access between the two lots or within it or along the side? And I believe the answer was, well, there is nothing. So. Mr. Shirley, I'm, I'm not sorry catching about you. that. Um, in most instances, it would, a replat would be required in order to allow the, the further subdivision of those, of those interior lots, because those need to have legal access. Okay, and then, as I understand it, staff make the decisions for replats, is that correct? In this instance, the, in order to subdivide at, the, at the, the densities that are of concern, apparent concern this evening and for a low density residential, that would require a comp comprehensive plan amendment as well as a replat. So both of those things would have to happen. The comprehensive plan amendment would have to come before the city council. But it is conceivable that this could happen and it could come before us. Yes, it is. Thank you. I will make the, the point that you couldn't put two lots together with a 40-foot right-of-way and have either enough width for the Bay Estate lots on either side nor depth for the LDR lots that were created. So you couldn't do it with two lots. I ran the numbers. Well, what about the corner lot or the other end of the corner? On this corner, basically it works because it's, as, as Hank stated, it has frontage on two streets. And so you end up with the minimum requirement for the Bay Estate lots on the corner, which is 100 by 150, and still meet the requirements for the LDR lots, which is a minimum 75 feet by 100 foot depth. So, but even, uh, so again, it works it on a corner, but it couldn't work on an interior lot, and it can't work with two interior lots, even if the two lots split the 40 foot right away. But I could build Ramswell Estates out of three lots, correct, and form an access road in the middle and have my own little section? You'd, you'd be doing a fairly substantial replat. Yeah, okay, thanks. And I might add that that would still have, Ramswell Estates that is, would still have to comply with the Bay Estates density unless you wanted to do a comprehensive plan amendment to change that to low density residential, in which case it would come before the city council. Right, and this is, what we're talking about tonight is a comprehensive plan amendment, correct? Council Member Morgan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, d I just have to say, uh, Mr. Parker and Mr. Staples, they're two wonderful families, and I respect them, and I'm truly sorry this happened. I just simply can't hold Mr. Riker accountable for Mr. Glanderson's or for the city of Sandy. Council Member Braden. Thank you, Mayor. I didn't think that it was Mr. Glander that Mr. Parker spoke with. Am I wrong about that? So the, the sign-in sheet that I just received from Mr. Parker is from the planning from Ashley and Hank. Has nothing to do with Mr. Glander. Uh, Mayor, I call the question. That we're going to just keep going round and round and round and round. Um, you know, we, we'll never get done with this. I, I, I call the question. I don't believe we ever got a second. For the original motion. Okay, we'll call the question. Do we need to repeat the question? Can anyone do that? And it's as read. We, we won't need to reread it then. Those in favor, please signify by voting yes. You have a machine down here, Mayor. Okay. 
We have three in favor, four against. Yes. Uh, I'd like to call a short break, please. Uh, this will be 10 minutes. 